What's up everybody, it's Austin here with Make Pop Music and Austin Hole Audio and Visual and we are back with another tutorial this week and for this week we have a really really fun one. We've gotten a lot of requests to do a how to make a song like Jeremy Zucker and Chelsea Cutler. So this week we're going to be focusing on how to make mellow pop from scratch and it's going to focus on those artists as well as people like JP Sachs, Sodi, all of those kind of like mellow singer songwriter pop artists. So we're really really excited because this is a little bit of a change of pace. You'll see that we're going to be using a lot more acoustic elements and a lot more stuff that is kind of live tracked and not quantized perfectly or is not using VSTs. So this should be a fun one for you guys to kind of learn a little bit different techniques than a lot of the things that we normally talk about. And if you have any questions along the way please let us know in the comments down below and we'll try to answer whatever we can other than that if you like the video please make sure you like comment and subscribe it helps us out a ton and if you want more information go and check out our website makepopmusic.com but without further ado let's actually hop in because there is a lot to cover in this video now it's time to actually record the acoustic. I'm sitting here on my couch. I've got my little kind of Dean travel guitar, and then I've got two Loudon Audio LA 120s. That's their small diaphragm pencil condenser. I've got them 24 inches apart, and when I record, I'm gonna be about eight inches back from the mic on the body and eight inches back on uh, kind of a couple inches below the head sock. And so this is called spaced pair. You can do a couple different kind of stereo miking techniques for guitar. You've got spaced pair, you've got XY, you've got mid side, uh, and then there's a few other less common ones. I like doing this because to me, it's the easiest to make sure that you're not doing any phase problems. Uh, and then also you just kind of have flexibility where you can get a little bit of different tone from the body and from the neck of the guitar rather than just having them all kind of come from the keyhole right here. So we have two Loudon Audio LA 120s and we have the low pass filter turned off completely. We have the high pass filter at 50 so we don't get any rumbling or room noise or anything like that. And then it's literally just as simple as grabbing the guitar, sitting kind of right here in the middle, um, kind of right by the butt of the guitar and near kind of fret three or four. And then I just record a few takes and get a couple that I actually like. Once I get a couple that I like, then I can go into my DAW and comp. So I got a couple of this. That kind of main melody right there. And then I also went and got a couple of the higher harmony. And just getting both of those octaves gave me a lot more flexibility. So now that we've got that recorded, we can actually go back into the DAW and check out what we've done. Now we're in the DAW, we have the acoustic layer right here that is the main one. And as you can see, I just took the left mic, panned that 100% left, took the right mic, panned that 100% right. And then I gave myself a little 25 second, uh, 25 millisecond delay right here just to make sure that it's stereo spread. Sometimes you might get phasing out in the middle, so. That's enough to make sure that you're gonna kind of get an audible difference where it's gonna spread out and not phase, uh, but it's not gonna be so audible that it sounds like the guitar has like a weird delay on it or anything like that. So we have the main and then we have the high. And then both together sounds like this. So I left everything pretty raw and organic. I didn't edit timing a bunch on any of these. Um, and I liked leaving in the pick noises and a lot of those little scrapes and everything, just because to me, that gave it the vibe that I wanted. And then for processing, I actually just processed the bus uh, since this is really all the acoustic guitar we're gonna have. So the first thing I did in Virtual Mix Rack was pop on one of the classic tubes. We weren't using a slate mic, however, using these sometimes gives you just a really cool characteristic, especially if you're using an already clean microphone. Um, so I went with that and it kind of gave me a cool little body that I didn't have before. And then the next thing I was doing was going through a virtual channel just to add some warmth, especially in the low mids, make them a little bit more full and not just boomy and hollow. And so that sounds like this. So this is really just kind of helping boost up those mids. The next thing we're gonna do is give it a little bit of brightness around seven and a half K. And then we're gonna give it a little bit of bite at closer to three K. And so we're just doing a couple dB of each of those. And then we're gonna scoop out a few dB of that kind of 300 region that's pretty boxy. And that's just gonna tighten that up. And then we're gonna go in with the FGN. And that's where we're actually gonna go ahead and boost a high shelf to give us some air. Um, and then we're just taking out a little bit of that uh, kind of like noisy 3.2K. We boosted the 3K right here and it, it felt really good because we did wide boost. So now I'm just kind of taming that once we have the air coming back because this is a high shelf and I didn't want that to affect down here too, too much. 
Next thing is we just have a distressor uh, doing quite a bit of gain reduction, but we do have the mix only at 50%. So it's just going to tame some of those peaks, but it's going to make sure that we don't squash down on that way too much. And then after that, we do have the multiband compressor, and this is where a lot of the sauce from this is coming from. And this is just kind of clamping down on those low mids. We're expanding those high mids a little bit to where we're getting a little bit more movement in that. And then we're just making sure that these kind of resonant, noisy frequencies up here are being tamed. <laughs> Next thing I'm doing is going into Verb Suite, and I'm just gonna put on the acoustic guitar plate and put the wetness pretty low. Just so we get a little bit of ambience in. And then this is really where the sauce of this guitar mix comes from, is RC Color. And so we do have a little bit of noise. We have a little tiny, tiny bit of wobble, a little bit of distort that's helping us kind of tame that top end, and then just some space and magnetic. So here's what it sounds like with and without it. So you'll see that it gives it a lot of noise, a lot of saturation, and it definitely dulls it quite a bit. So I just brought the magnitude, which is basically their wetness knob, to like 65% um, and made sure that we weren't stepping on it too much. But to me, that put it in a much better space rather than just having it be super bright and super um, kind of high fidelity. I wanted something that was a little bit more grungy and lo-fi, and I wanted something that had a little bit more depth. And then we're just going in right here, and this is this was done later in the process, but we're just scooping out a little bit of mids here just to make sure that we can have that vocal poke through, and then we're just taming like the 5.5K up here. And then this last Pro-Q is just a filter that's going to be opening up with the song. We'll get to that a little bit later. So once we had that acoustic guitar, the next thing that I like to do for songs like this is add a bed. And that's typically going to be like keys, organs, roads, Wurlitzers, um, any kind of like long extended keys like that. So for this song, we used very little VSTs. The only VST we really used at all was the piano from Arturia. All of the other key sounds are actually out of my, my Roland Dimension D that's right down here. Um, and this is just something that I, I wanted to try for this song was because I didn't want everything super MIDI and super quantized. I wanted a lot more dynamics. So I just played it straight in. I didn't even route the MIDI. So nothing is quantized in this. Nothing has been lined up whatsoever. Not even the piano that we do have that is MIDI. The first thing I actually laid down was gonna be this little electric piano with some chorus. And that's just coming straight out of the Roland. And that's just got a little bit of EQ and a little bit of reverb, but it's really doing nothing crazy. Next thing I did was I laid down this piano, or I'm sorry, this organ from the Juno. And we were just kind of boosting up some mids on that just to make sure that it cut through the mix. So we've got these two. Then we just threw on a kind of soft piano on top of that. And these are things that all just kind of create a nice ambient bed for that guitar to sit on. That way they're, they're helping it. But this guitar has so much movement, I don't want a lot of other movement in the synths and stuff like that and in the keys because then it just might be way too much for such a kind of slow, somber song. Once I added those things, that's when I go ahead and I start adding what I like to call the atmosphere sounds. So the first thing we're gonna start with is this airy pad. What's funny is this airy pad is actually, it's like a drone. Uh, I'll show it to you real quick. And that actually just started with me taking what was normally a much kind of shorter version of this. And uh, what I did was I like to just like time stretch pads a lot. So. This is probably more like what it sounded like originally. It was probably only about this long and sounded more similar to this. And then what I'll do is I'll just drag that out through the whole song and then I'll put on a ton of reverb to kind of clear out any artifacts, smooth them into each other. And then I just added uh, some EQ and some phaser. So basically I took a really short pad sound, drag it out forever long, and then put on some stuff to just kind of tame the frequencies and give it a little bit of movement. So we have that over top of the piano, the chorus, and the electric piano chorus, and then the organ.
And that kind of gives us that like really angelic, uh, just nice kind of floating sound. Then we have these Juno strings right here that also came from the keyboard. So you can see that these do kind of introduce a nice little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of counter melody. Um, I do start, you know, doing a couple things with my right hand on this that aren't just kind of playing that sustained chord. And the left hand is going along to the bass line. So we are getting a little bit more melodic movement within this one. And then you can see as every time I play it, I played it in a, a little bit harder velocity. So as the song goes, it dynamically will just kind of build out through the song. And that's just one of the things that I really liked about recording it from the outboard, you know, this time instead of having everything be synth related is the velocities on outboard stuff typically translate so much better rather than a lot of the plugins. A lot of plugins aren't super, super velocity sensitive, and so sometimes it's a little bit harder to get um, something like that kind of dynamic range without doing a bunch of automation, where something like this literally just took me as long as it took to play it. So we have that now. We've got the piano, the pad, the electric piano, and the organ, and that little drone sound. The next thing that I threw in was I found this cool little patch from the Juno that almost sounded like reverses. And that originally sounded more like this. So I just filtered out a little bit of stuff, uh, brought down the high end, put on some delay so I could give it some extra space. Put on some reverb just to put it in the space a little bit more and then i actually throw on the Haas effect to go ahead and separate it that way we got a nice big wide stereo sound So that was it for the most part for quite a while. And then I just started layering up some extra little scents. We might as well cover them while we're here uh, for when the song actually comes in and when we have like what would be like the drop or the chorus or whatever. Um, I threw in a harder piano that's actually an octave down again with just the piano from Arteria. This one's an upright piano though instead. And then I threw in this little Celeste. This is like the first like actual lead synth element that we have and what continues to be the only lead synth. And again, I left that completely unquantized. Everything in here is just as I played it straight into my DAW. Uh, and then I just added this nice little tubular kind of church bell just to pop in that extra part. The last thing I did before I started writing the actual vocals was I threw in this bass right here, which is again straight from the Juno. All it has is max bass on it. And then that's pretty much arrangement wise everything until we get to vocals and drums. So it's just a couple different pads, a couple different kind of like key beds. So piano, electric piano, organ. Uh, we've got the little reverses doing a slight melody, the hard piano layered up top just to give it a little bit of extra oomph when it kicks in. That's the less, which is just kind of like the lead element in the chorus. And then the tubular bell, which is almost just acting as like a down hit um, when the heavier parts of the song kind of come in. Other than that, the guitar just layers out the same thing throughout. And then I just put a, uh, pro cue on it and just automated the cutoff down so we once we get into the second verse kind of have that fading out and that's really all of the elements of the song so then fleshing out the song from there was just basically picking what elements I wanted to be in what section and that kind of came along as I was writing the vocal so now that we have that actual bed of music done let's go ahead and let's talk about the vocals the first thing I did was the main vocal, and on this song, I wanted a little bit of a drier vocal, so similar vocal chain to normal. I'm not going to go over a ton of that stuff. Basically, it's just VMR with, uh, you know, some EQ and compression and the actual mic module, and then the same usual suspects, and this will kind of change from every song. So uh, compression, EQ, DS, 
EQ, um, and then a little bit of multiband at the end just to kind of tighten up some of the areas. What's mainly different about this song is the sins, and because we're doing a lot drier vocal here, I'll go over those a little bit separately. Maybe I should get some help. I really fucking hate myself. I'm looking for some validation. So for this song, I wanted the vocal to be super upfront, super dry, and it's just basically one vocal throughout the entire track, and then we layer up a couple things here and there, but vocal production on this one is pretty simple. So now that we have like the actual vocal chain, let's go ahead and let's just take a look at some of the sins that we're doing to kind of give us a little bit of room so the vocal doesn't sound weirdly dry, uh, but it still kind of appears to the listener as a dry vocal. So we're using Verb Suite as a kind of small room sound. So we've just got the small Vox room setting, 100% wet, of course. Uh, for the delay on this, we are using repeater, and we're just at 1 8 and we have spread it out so it's a stereo 1 8 It's not gonna ping pong, it's just gonna hit both sides at the same time, uh, but it is gonna be stereo instead of just coming right up the middle, and then we're just filtering out a little bit of that, and then filtering out even more with Pro-Q. For the slap delay, this is probably the most important part, we're doing a 16th slap delay, and this is actually right up the middle. So no ping pong and no spread, um, and this stays a little bit louder in the mix. We're gonna use a tape delay, so it kind of filters out the high and lows naturally, and then we're also gonna filter them out a little bit more with this and with this. So essentially, we've got a short room, a uh, 1 8 stereo delay, and a 1 16th mono delay, and that's just gonna kind of give us a little bit of that slapback you feel without it feeling super like antique or vintage or anything like that. And then other than that, we do have a long reverb on here. It's at like four seconds, so it's actually really, really long. But as you can see, we cut out most of the highs and we cut out most of the lows and then filtered it out even a little bit more. Actually, we didn't do anything on this Pro-Q. So that stayed empty. Um, and then we just kind of blended it into taste. So you can see on this song, the sin levels are much smaller than they normally are on the channel. I really fucking hate myself I'm looking for some validation To feel the things I've never felt So there's definitely some stuff going on, but in the whole context of the mix, it's not gonna poke through a ton. Maybe I should get some help I really fucking hate myself I'm looking for some validation To feel the things I've never felt Lately it's so been so basically I just sat down, wrote the whole song out, and then that's where I was kind of piecing this together with you know, figuring out which keys I wanted to go where and when I wanted to filter out the guitar. And that's when you kind of go into that arrangement road of figuring out, okay, I kind of threw everything at the wall at first, so now I'm gonna see what sticks and where I want what. So then it was just kind of like piecing it together as I was writing the vocal. We basically have it split up to where we kind of have a verse right here. Maybe I should get some help. I really fucking hate myself. I'm looking for some validation. new ways to numb the and then we're gonna go into what's kind of like a pre-chorus, I guess. Um, and that's where most of the keys are gonna pick up a little bit. I'm the pain, yeah. My therapist said I should start writing. I always forget the days that I'm hiding. Yeah. And then we're gonna go into what would normally be like a chorus, but in this song it's more of like kind of an instrumental break. I wouldn't sleep at all. So we have the super dry vocal right there. Uh, the one thing that I did was I put a little bit of a fast delay throw right here. And that's just with my exact same vocal chain, but then I threw on a uh, repeater at 1 8 with the vintage tape delay, super high feedback, um, and then threw on some reverb and threw on some EQ just to kind of filter that out. And that's just gonna help us kind of go into that next part. Because in this next part, this is where we start kind of playing around with vocal production, is we do have this vocal harmony right here. And so since the main vocal was so dry, I wanted the harmony to be a little bit more wet because the main vocal starts to sound a little bit awkward as things come in, and it definitely needed space, but I didn't want that main melody to kind of get muddied up or wet. So that's where we have this kind of super, super wet, uh, mono harmony that's coming over top. So again, pretty much the same vocal chain. We just have H delay on this doing a 1 8 ping pong, and then we just have Pro R doing like a four second plate kind of vibe. My therapist said I should start writing. I always forget the days that I'm hiding. Yeah. And then we did a low vocal, same chain as a normal one, uh, just 
took out a little bit more lows on this one. See, I kind of did like a really gentle uh, high pass over there. My therapist said I should start writing. I always forget the days that I'm hiding. Yeah. Then we just have this last little extra vocal delay throw. My therapist said I should start writing. I always forget the days that I'm hiding. Yeah. And for that vocal throw, all I did was duplicate the main vocal uh, and then copy down whatever words I wanted to repeat. Threw on repeater at one fourth, did give it a stereo spread, filtered out quite a little bit, threw on a reverb again just to kind of give me a longer sustained sound, uh, and then just filtered that out. And then now we're going to go into the couple little harmonies that happen right here, right before the little dropper or, or chorus kicks in. So we have one harmony that's panned 85 left and one 87 right. And so let's just take a look at this first one. We do have H delay on it doing a 1 8 ping pong and we do have Pro R doing that four second. So it's more similar to this vocal harm uh, chain that we have up here. However, it's not quite as wet. Anyone for weeks have been able to sleep at all? Anyone for weeks have been able to so for this song, instead of doing the traditional, like everything's going to be double tracked and panned evenly, but separately, I really wanted to play around with having a vocal arrangement where I had different harmonies and different kind of melodic elements in different areas of the stereo spectrum, just to kind of create a little bit of extra width and keep things nice and simple. So we have that main vocal up the middle, the main harmony up the middle, but it is wet with stereo effects. So it kind of like starts at the middle and spreads out as it gets wetter. Uh, the low vocal is right up the middle, and then we have one harmony that's going to be on the right and a totally separate harmony on the left. And that kind of gives us this really cool little vocal arrangement that has a lot of stereo spread, but it still feels pretty simple. Just to remind me, haven't seen anyone for weeks, haven't been able to sleep at all. So, now that we've done that, we can get into the vocal part that you guys probably wanted to hear about the most in a Chelsea Cutler song, and that is those like super ambient, vocal choppy, vocal throwy kind of sounds that she's always doing. So we have one right here that's going to appear on the back end of this. I should start writing. I always forget the days that I'm hiding. So we have it appearing right there. And then we also have it appearing in the actual instrumental break. So you'll be happy to know that these are probably much more simple than you're anticipating. Again, I just took my lead vocal chain because for some reason I just always duplicate that. Um, and then let's go ahead and let's see what is a little bit different. So this is pretty much what we would have with none of the extra effects on it. And all we're really doing to get that extra little tune sound is in auto-tune, we're just going up a whole octave. So without that, it just sounds even more plain. So we're just gonna take that up an octave in here. Then we're gonna go and we're gonna distort, and we're gonna distort it a lot. So I have the drive all the way up and the mix all the way up. Uh, because to me, that's like one of the key signatures is the sound is always so distorted that you almost can't even tell uh, that the original vocal had like any kind of inflection or anything like that. It just sounds like this big washy kind of almost like a whale sound. Um, then we're going to go through doubler. We just did the doubler for voices. And then uh, we've got H delay that's just going to help us kind of spread that out. One fourth ping pong filtered out, of course. Then we've got Pro R. This is really where the sauce of this comes in. So we've got almost a seven second decay and the mix is pretty high on this. So I'll play it and it might murder your ears. So just be ready. So we have a ton of reverb. It's super, super wet. The next thing that we're gonna do that she does a lot in her songs is throw on Kickstart or LFO tool or something like that to give you a pumping. And this is just a one fourth kind of side chain uh, set to like a pumping. Uh, preset that they have and then we're just going to scoop out quite a bit of those like really nasally sharp frequencies in the mids and kickstart is only at 50 percent so it's going to give us a nice little pump but we're still going to get that kind of like ambient trail Days that I'm hiding, I 
that's really all there is to that little vocal trick that you hear her doing in almost every song. And then in the chorus, we just duplicated that and we just took it down uh, to the normal octave and then drove the foreman up. So if we weren't gonna use the foreman, it would sound like this. We turn that foreman on and take it all the way up to the top and it's gonna give us that kind of like throaty, kind of like nasty sound. And then mixing that with a high octave, So I literally just sang whatever melody I wanted, tuned it up, and then threw on all those effects. And that's really all there is to that. And then that's pretty much the entire song until we get to this part back here that has some drums. And we can go ahead and talk about what we did. We do have a cymbal swell. Uh, I think these come from our indie pop pack. So there's two different cymbals just spread out stereo. So we've got 170 left, 160 right. So we've got those happening. And then most importantly, we've got this little kick that comes in. And this is from our vintage pack. And it's actually a longer sample. It has quite a bit of this like weird little tail that's really cool. It's like a little slap back delay that's on it. I, so I just cut that short so it didn't get in the way too, too much. And then I just took out all the high end because I really just need that like little minimal low end thump. So we have that now, and then I took that same bass stem that we had earlier and chopped it up, so now it's gonna hit quarter notes. So that's it for that kick. And then second most importantly, we have these little blips right here. And this is a really cool kit that they have in battery. Uh, it's uh, uh, Asamta, uh, Asamta, Asamta? I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's like this really cool kind of like ambient kit. So I just tuned up some of the drums in there and then threw on a couple extra little effects. So I have like an EQ that's really taking out most of the mids and the highs. And then I have a reverb and then I have a stereo delay. And that's giving us this cool little like. And the reason I wanted to use something so minimal is because this drum pattern could get very like EDM or even very like uh, kind of like Latin pop if you're not careful with the sounds that you pick. But picking such kind of soft minimal sounds really makes sure that they're not going to get way, way, way too big and they're not going to like take over the whole vibe of the song. So now we have this. Next thing we did was threw in a hat loop. This is from our hi-hat pack. This is the 92 BPM, so of course I just time aligned that and then drug it offset because it was starting at the one, but I wanted to start like an eighth note later. So I just drug the whole thing back and chopped it. And so this is what it sounds like with nothing. So I threw on multi-pass. Again, as a lot of you know, my little secret sauce. I threw on the Make Me Minimal preset and it did everything I needed. And that just gives it like almost like this cool kind of shaker vibe and then took out some of that high end because the rest of the song is just so dark we don't need a lot of that poking through and threw on a phaser. And then we have this actual shaker down here and this is what that sounded like. And that's just from our shaker pack and then I threw on transgate. just to make it a little bit choppier and kind of give it more of a vibe. And then I threw on the drum modulator preset on multi-pass right here. And then threw on doubler to give it some spread. And then once again, took out the low so we're not getting any of that weird like low end that you hear in shakers and we're not gonna get too, too much of that high end poking through the mix. So this is literally all the drums we have. And y'all know I'm normally a very like drum forward producer. I'll normally put a shit ton of drums and percussion in, um, but it was kind of fun to limit myself to just this. So now we have that with all of the synths that we had already added earlier, all of the guitar and that bass that once again we had just kind of chopped up to be quarter notes instead of big long sustain notes. And then the vocals stay the same. The only thing that we've added is we did layer up the left and the right uh, vocal 
with that main. So we do have like a triple take of that main melody. Put a lock on my heart, throw away the keys. You can tear me apart just to watch me bleed. Yeah. All you'll find is a hole of what used to be. I give every piece of me, and now my chest is left empty. And I shit you not, that is literally all that is in this song. So probably the most minimal production we've gone over on this, but we were able to go a little bit more in depth. So with this, really just make sure you have a, a good kind of focus element and then just build it out from there. Uh, but that's gonna do it. And there you go, we did it. We made a full mellow pop song from start to finish. As you can see, just starting with that acoustic guitar really gives you a nice kind of bass layer to build the whole song on. So with stuff like this, it is all about finding that one key element, whether it's gonna be a piano, an acoustic guitar, a kind of ambient electric guitar, finding one of those kinds of things that you can use throughout the entire song and then kind of build a bed of instrumentation on top of. Uh, is really the key to kind of creating that mellow pop vibe where the song feels simple and it feels big and open and warm. However, there's enough going on that it kind of fills out and, and really kind of punches you and has that impact that you're looking for. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let us know what you want to see next time in the comments below. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask and we will try to answer. Come join the Facebook group if you have any questions as well. You can join all of the like 25,000 members, post any question that you may have about audio, production, um, music business, anything like that, and there are tons of people that'll help you. Other than that, head over to our website, makepopmusic.com, to check out all of our samples, presets, courses, blog posts, all of our other videos. And other than that, we will see you guys next week. I hope you're all staying safe. Much love, everybody. Peace out. Put a lock on my heart, throw away the keys. You can tear me apart just to watch me bleed.